Hello, best of your listeners, and welcome to another edition of the Actively Passive Investing Show. I am Theo Hicks, and as always, Travis Watts. Travis, how are you doing today? Theo, doing great. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Yeah, happy New Year to you as well. I think this will air either the week before, a couple days before New Year's or after New Year's. But regardless, the theme of today's episode is going to be the the New Year's. And so, um, you know, it's a tradition for most people to set a New Year's resolutions. And so since this is the actively passive investing show and something we focus on here a lot for passive investors is the idea of time freedom. Uh, Travis and I thought it would be a good idea to do something similar to what we did uh, a few months ago in the episode where we went through a list of questions from uh, Tim Ferriss's book, Tribe of Mentors. And Travis and I kind of alternated and answered those questions ourselves. Today, we created a list of time freedom themed questions for 2021. So things that we, um, in a sense, like like a list of maybe New Year's resolutions, uh, but the purpose of, um, you know, having more more time freedom. So, um, yeah, Travis, uh, do you want to go into these? Well, I know you want to talk a little bit more about time freedom um, and our show before we jump into answering these questions. Sure. Yeah, I just thought this would be a really good way to close out the year uh, to the theme of our actively passive show. The show is obviously for active and passive investors. Um, so then I thought, you know, we all kind of want to get to this point in our lives sooner or later where, you know, we're hands off and, and we have this time freedom. We have the ability to retire, spend time with family, travel, whatever it is we're passionate about. And so I thought, you know, Maybe these 10 questions can give our listeners a few things to think about if you're going to set some New Year's resolution goals instead of just saying, you know, I'm going to work out for 20 minutes a day, you know, all year long and all the traditional stuff. I'm going to lose 30 pounds. Maybe it's something to think about now. How are you going to start creating this time freedom in your life? And I'll be brief with this story. I know I've shared this before on our show, but it's just such an impactful story. The, the story of um, the, the nurse Bronnie Ware, you know, 2009, working in a, a terminally ill patient care unit with you know, kind of like a hospice, you know, folks living out their, their final days in life. And Bronnie, you know, uh, surveying basically her patients, you know, just being friendly and talking. And she came across a lot of folks um, who would, would, uh, tell her essentially their life regrets. You know, I wish I would have done this and I wish I hadn't have done that. And she decided that, um, you know, that, that was impactful. So she, she made a huge blog out of this, the, the top regrets of the dying that later became a book. Now she's a speaker on and on. But the thing I want to point out about that story is that the, the top two regrets are, I never pursued my dreams and aspirations And I didn't spend enough time with my friends and family. And so knowing those are top of mind to folks at the end of of life, as we know it, I just felt, you know, time freedom makes a lot of sense to talk about, you know, and and maybe instead of thinking about how you're going to get there, what you're going to do with your time when you're 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe, maybe we start thinking about it now. We start planning for that and hopefully we can get there a whole lot sooner and not have these same regrets. So that's the backstory behind the 10 questions. And um, yeah, that, that's really why uh, I, I pieced it together that way. Perfect. Well, let's jump into these questions. So I think last time I went first and you went second. So let's reverse the order this time. I'm going to ask you uh, the question first and then um, you can ask me the question second. So uh, sure. best of listeners who are listening, uh, maybe keep out a, a, a pen and pencil or on your computer, on your phone, and you can type up these 10 questions as well and answer them to see. Um, because I, I enjoyed this exercise. It helped me uh, kind of reflect on this year and then also help me uh, come up with some things I can start doing in, in the next year. Um, and so I think it'd be helpful to, uh, you know, to, to you listening to do the same thing. So first question is, what time waster are you willing to let go of in 2021? This is a great question because to the point of time freedom, right? We want to free up our time. We don't want to squander our time and life is so short as we all know. So 
for me, I mean, gosh, I could probably think of 20 different things here that, that are potential time wasters. The one I thought of though, I'm such a big advocate for self-education and reading and, you know, in books and things like this um, and just self-learning. However, there is a caveat to that, that I've spoke about before. And that's, I went way too hard, too fast, hardcore in, in 2015, where I just read a ton of books and it was almost analysis paralysis. Your brain can't do all of that, you know? So you need to really be choosy with what you're going to read and what you're going to study and what mentors you're going to put in your life and what information you're going to tune into. To that point, I am grateful that I am invited to so many different Facebook real estate groups and LinkedIn groups and real estate meetup groups. And I'm in like more groups than I even know about. <laughs> and, and that becomes a problem because you start spreading yourself too thin. We've got our podcast. I speak with investors. I do a lot of things uh, actively and, and trying to keep up with all these different groups online is just something I really need to cut back on. I need to find the one or two groups that I have the biggest uh, impact on, you know, to, to help people and just focus my time there and not try to be in 30 or 40 different real estate meetup groups. So for me, it's it's really going through that in early 2021 and just cutting back on, uh, unfortunately, being being part of too many things. Yeah, you said uh, you're, you're, you're grateful for that being a, a problem. I wish mine were, um, you know, I wish mine was, oh, I'm reading too much and I'm, you know, doing too much uh, real estate stuff. Mine's a little bit different. So okay. um, uh, for me, I was reflecting on 2020 and uh, I, I, I would say that on the, on the positive side for me, I have cut out a lot of, of time wasters. Um, you know, I think I mentioned this before, but I used to play games all the time, play video games all the time. Um, you know, I'd watch, you know, TV shows until two, three in the morning. Um, uh, and then kind of similar to maybe what you were talking about with reading the books, uh, I used to, to, to consume content, you know, educational content on, on YouTube. But then you go down the YouTube rabbit hole where you're, you know, video after video after video and you're spending hours and hours you know, doing it. And that point it's kind of just, you're hearing the same information over and over again. And are you really, you know, applying it to your life? Um, and so I, I have been able to, to, to minimize most of those uh, in 2020. The other, other big one, I think that uh, saves a lot of time is social media because you get through that same kind of rabbit hole idea. And everyone knows that you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and you can't stop. Uh, in 2021, the one thing I want to eliminate for good would be, um, you know, going on Amazon Prime and watching TV shows and, and movies. Um, I've, 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 I've minimized it way, you know, because again, I stay pretty late watching them. I've minimized it uh, to the point now where it's manageable, but I would like to eliminate that entirely um, in, uh, in 2021. So... Yep. I'm with you, man. I, I've subscribed to YouTube premium and Amazon prime. And sometimes that that's a bad thing. <laughs> it sucks exactly. you get all this free content. And it's like, should I even be paying attention to this content? <laughs> exactly. That's a great one. Cool. So, so, so yeah, question number two, Travis, uh, if you had one more hour during the day, what would you do with it? Wow, that's another tough one because again, I, I could have 10 answers to that. But ultimately, I think what I would do is is I would read more. And I know that that maybe sounds hypocritical to my last answer, but if you're being very choosy with what you're reading and it really has a direct purpose, I would love to squeeze in one additional hour per day. Unfortunately, that usually gets put to the back burner. And then of course, things come up and dinner and a call and then you know, you're in bed. <laughs> so uh, I, for me, it's reading. Yeah, for, for, for me, it's, um, I would want to work out for that hour. So if my hour is 25 hours a day, and I had an extra hour at like noon, let's say instead of going from noon to one, it went from noon to 13, or something, and then the one uh, I would work out uh, during that, that hour, because that's something I've that's something that's it's really difficult to, to squeeze in um, with every day. And, and, and we'll get, to, there's some other, other questions we have later on that I'm um, kind of also hit on this, but I, I like this question because, you know, it's, it's okay. The first question was, what's one time waste I want to get rid of? And so if that one thing you're doing uh, is, uh, is, you know, taking up an hour of your time per day, then question number two can be what you use to, to fill that slot. And so maybe at first it could be, you know, 15 minutes of the new thing and then 45 minutes of the old thing. Um, and then ultimately getting it shorter and shorter till let's say 45 minutes of the new thing, 15 minutes of the old thing, and then 
one the full hours used on the new thing and not the old thing. Yep. Agreed. Okay, question number three. This is a fun one. <laughs> what have you been procrastinating on that you would like to complete in 2021? Yeah, you know, really, I'm not that big of a procrastinator, thank goodness. It's never been something in a part of my life. But that being said, of course, everybody procrastinates on something. And I guess playing off of your last answer, for me, I guess that is the gym. Uh, you know, I, I'm way more into, I guess, working out my mind <laughs> than working out my body, which isn't always a great thing, you know, so I let something suffer to, to enhance something else. And yeah, the gym has been, we've talked about this before, I think on the celery juice episode, uh, you were talking so much more about the physical workouts. And I was talking about just doing like a one diet change, <laughs> but still leaving out the physical part. So for me, that's the gym, I guess, if I procrastinate anything, it's that. So, so one thing that I'm I'm trying to do on on this on this note is um and I came up with this a, a few weeks ago because my wife will always ask me to do these these you know uh, menial tasks around the house, and I always say I'll do it tomorrow I'll do it this weekend and it never gets done and the and the, 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 the the stack of empty Amazon boxes uh, gets higher and higher in the in the front room and um, you know the garage is still dirty and so one thing that I've tried to do uh, within reason obviously is to whenever she tells me to do something, I just do it, I, just, like, I drop everything I'm doing and just do it in that moment. Because if I don't, I'll procrastinate, I won't do it. And one example of this would be um, our garage. We've got a bunch of big boxes in our garage, you know, furniture in our garage and cobwebs and, um, you know, mud and dirt in our garage. And every time, and the reason, and this, you know, this seems like it might be something super simple, but whenever I go in there to drive anywhere, I, I see it and I think about it and it stresses me out and I feel guilty about it. And I know, um, uh, one person that some people that listen to the show might might have heard it before. I know Joe went and saw him speak, which is Jordan Peterson. Mm -hmm. And one of his rules is, you know, clean your room. <laughs> it's like a, a very simple thing. And it's kind of like, um, you know, uh, your, 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 the whole concept is that your external environment is a reflection of your internal environment. And so if your office and your room is a mess, then you know, your mind is probably also a complete mess. And so if you start by, by cleaning your room, yeah, you can kind of reduce that 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 anxiety and stress that comes from just stuff being scattered everywhere. And so I get that from the garage a big time. But then kind of in, on a on a larger scale, uh, you know, boxes or you know other things that need to be picked up from the store, uh, things that I know I procrastinate on all the time, just doing them, you know, immediately or saying I'll do them by the end of the day. Uh, you know, I, I've been doing this for about for a few weeks, and it it, it definitely helps. Um, I don't I don't think about uh, all the all the stuff I haven't done as much. That's a great one. Love it. Okay, number four. What is your favorite thing to do, and how can you make more time to do it? Yeah, so I've talked about this a ton, but my wife and I we love to travel, and unfortunately, 2020, you know, COVID, and and it is what it is. We like international travel, but haven't been able to do a whole lot of that. We snuck in Belize earlier this year, so we're we're grateful for that. But uh, the whole reason, well, shouldn't say the whole reason, a big reason why. I chose a passive approach to real estate eventually is because of this, because I didn't like having so much uh, active real estate that held me down to a particular area, geographic location. I always had to attend a closing or turn a unit or deal with something. And so that's kind of how uh, we have made more time to travel is by investing in, you know, real estate, private placements and things like that. Additionally, you know, even though it's an older book, I love Tim Ferriss's four hour work week because it gives you a lot of great ideas on how to automate your life in a very digital way. And so I utilize things like the, the Calendly link, you know, and Zoom calls and things like this to speak with investors or, or anyone wanting to reach out. And you can do that from anywhere. You know, I love that. And in some ways, you know, 2020 has been a, a blessing in that sense that we've all had to, you know, been forced to work from home and, and haven't had these these old school, you know, face to face events to attend. And it's helped me get more creative uh, on my outreach with people. And so, again, we could be traveling and, you know, everything's done digitally in my world. And, and so, yeah, that's that's what I love. And that's how we do it. Perfect. Mine's, mine's pretty. Um... 
Mine's pretty simple. I, 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 my favorite thing to do right now is read and uh, how to make more time to do it. I mean, some of my ideas uh, was one, waking up a little bit earlier in the morning. Uh, and then, and, and then, which is kind of something I talk about in my in the next question, when we talk about morning routines, but the other one, and I'm pretty sure I said this before, but um, because, because reading is something that I enjoy doing while I'm doing it. But that when I, when I think about doing it, sometimes I'm just like, oh, like, you know, I, I, I'll do it tomorrow. Or I'll, I'll put it off again, going back to procrastination. And so, um, you know, or, hey, I, or I didn't finish my, my reading for the day and it's 10 o'clock at night and I'm tired. I'll just go to bed and, you know, stack it to tomorrow. And next thing you know, in a week, I've got all this reading I need to do. Uh, and so one thing that's helped me was to recognize some of those time wasters I used to do. Um, you know, late into the night and then um, tell myself, okay, well, if I could do that, which was, you know, had no, really no positive benefit uh, whatsoever past the immediate gratification, as opposed to doing this thing that I enjoy doing and that does have a positive impact further than, you know, the immediate moment, um, then, you know, I could do that. Uh, it's, I can say it as late as I need to, to get that done. Uh, because, you know, I used to spend all this, I used to waste all this time staying up till three in the morning, doing something that was completely meaningless. And so the what is reading, the how is waking up earlier and then you know, reminding myself all the time, I, 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 all those late nights I spent doing things that were, you know, completely useless. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Number five, I'm looking, for, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing your answer to this one. So uh, how can you redesign your mornings? And so, you know, or, or best morning routine ideas for 2021? Yeah, playing off of, of your last response there, waking up earlier is so, you know, un underestimated. I mean, how much you can accomplish. It really doesn't matter, in my opinion, what you do with the time, as long as that's productive. Uh, you, you might meditate, uh, you, you might do your emails, you might work out, it might give you just extra time to, to make a healthier meal instead of running out the door and grabbing something on the go or whatever it is you do. Um, I think that's key. Now, when I say wake up earlier, there's extreme cases of this, you know, the <laughs> Dwayne Johnson, you know, the rock, he wakes up at like three in the morning or something to get all this stuff done. I don't know about that. I mean, if, if your body can handle that, I guess, consistently, maybe. But for me, it's like, I look at when do I have to wake up? You know, if I have a, a call at 9 a.m., well, I have to be up at the very latest at 830, but I don't like to push it because then I'm, I'm, I'm running around, I'm trying to get stuff done and I'm frantic when I'm on the call. So I'll set my alarm for like seven. And then that gives me plenty of time to wake up, to, to stretch, to, to check emails, to make sure I'm, I'm up with the news and what's happening. And, and that's the approach I like is not to feel rushed so generally speaking wake up early yeah i mean <laughs> i have the same answer actually uh, attempting to to slowly again not make a dramatic waking up at you know seven and then waking up at three o'clock but slowly pushing it back um you know one, one thing that, that helps me is uh whenever you know you're forced to get up early for say uh you know you're traveling right you've got a 7 a.m flight uh, you know, you get up at 4.30 in the morning to get to the airport at, at you know, 5, so you're there on time. And then you know, think about how you're doing all this stuff that you usually don't, I usually don't do. Um, and I'm going through the time change. I'm, you know, constantly talking to people all day long when I'm usually in my office, just, you know, writing or whatever. And then, and then, the, and then you know, obviously I get tired, but then night comes and I go to bed at, you know, 10 o'clock or whatever. Like I usually go to bed and I survived. I didn't die. Uh, I didn't hurt anyone. <laughs> Nothing bad happened. And I was totally fine. And so, uh, as you mentioned, maybe that early is not sustainable. But if you can do that, you know, if, if you can see that as possible to do, then when you wake up and you know, your alarm goes off at 6 a.m. and you want to hit that snooze button for another 15 minutes or half an hour, I uh, realize, you know, remember, try to bring up something in your, you know, that time in your past where, everything ended up fine. You might be a little tired, have a coffee, it'll be okay. Um, so that's kind of you know, one thing to help maybe wake up early. And then the other thing that helps you that, that I do in the morning, um, two things I do in the morning to make sure I get my, you know, my morning routine done is number one, I don't, I usually, I usually try, try not to open my email um, at all until I've got my routine done because you know you get sucked in <laughs> to that. Uh, I guess you know, anything that could potentially suck you in and, and, uh, and take away time from completing that routine, um, you know, I, I try, I try to do another thing too, is that once I am done with my entire routine, the first thing I do 
is I open my email and then I set my agenda for the day. So I say, okay, here are all the tasks I need to complete uh, by the end of, of the day. Um, and so those are some of my best morning routine ideas. Yep, love it. Number six, how can you add 15 minutes of gratitude to each day? Yeah, so th this is kind of derived from Tony Robbins. We've talked a lot about Tony Robbins and my wife and I have attended a lot of his seminars, programs, audio books, all, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, this simple thing, if you take nothing else from any work he's ever done, uh, it's probably the most impactful. And for anyone that knows what I'm talking about, when you go to a, a Tony Robbins event, he walks you through like a 15 minute gratitude exercise. And what's interesting is he starts by saying, Think of something that bothers you or upsets you or a problem in your life or, you know, something that you feel is, is um, you know, bringing you down or, or whatever, right, angers you. And so you start that way, right? And to your point of like flipping out of bed, opening up the news and reading a bunch of negativity, same concept, right? All of a sudden your mind starts going, you know, <laughs> what the hell's going on? And so this gratitude exercise puts you in a different mindset first thing in the morning is what I found is best. And you start to get perspective. You start to realize what's really important. Like we talked about Bronnie Ware and, you know, life in general. And it's almost like you're looking down at from a bird's eye perspective. And so what's most important is, is love and connection and family and, you know, that you're healthy and, and happy. And we live in a, a, a modern world today. We have all these conveniences. So you start getting in this mindset of being grateful for what you have. Then you can transition throughout the day into the news and the negativity. And surprisingly, it just diminishes uh, the magnitude of, of that negativity. And that to me is the biggest thing right there um, you know, and, and why I still do this, you know, every day. So, so really that, that's kind of why, and that's, you know, how is simple. You, you, you can write it down. You can just think about it. You can meditate on it. You can get Tony Robbins to walk you through it, you know, whatever works for you, but it's just putting yourself in a mindset of, of the greater perspective, basically. Yeah. And then, uh, for me, just to add to that, uh, you know, as you said, you, you find it best to do it in the morning. Um, just, again, this is something that I, I'm really bad at this. Uh, there's a couple of, and then there's so many good things that I'm really bad at. So this is one of them. And, um, you know, one of the things that, that, uh, that, that, you know, I, I struggle with in a sense is that, you know, I, you know, I, I'll do it in the morning. To, you know, to, and the goal would be to set the foundation so that you filter everything that you see throughout the day through that perspective uh, to kind of remind yourself every morning. But then I forget like right away. <laughs> I'm in the world and I completely forget. And so one thing that I, I try to do that's helpful for me is, um, you know, express gratitude, however you want to do that, um, you know, and obviously in the morning, uh, at night, but then also um, whatever... I, I'm I, whatever I'm transitioning or uh, whenever I'm transitioning from one activity to another. And so, you know, in the morning, I, I said, you know, you sit down and you sit down in your office, you open up a book and um, you're grateful for the fact that you have the book and that there's paper that can be printed on. And back in the day, they had a hand write everything and it's impossible to get a book. People couldn't even read, um, you know, and then once I'm done with that, you get up and you make your coffee and be, you know, uh, grateful for the coffee and uh, the, the people who picked the beans and ground the coffee for me and, you know, transported it over to America and then put it in the bag. And then I, I got to go to the coffee shop and drive my car there to pick it up. Um, and, and so just uh, doing that. And of course I forget all the time, right? I probably do it like maybe two or three times a day, but uh, over time, just like anything, you kind of gradually pick up momentum. You gradually, you can, you, you begin to remember it more and more and more until the goal would be your entire day. You're doing this. Um, at least that's my goal. Um, and then uh, making sure that in the beginning, if you do want to attempt to do this and you only do it once per day, the, at the end of the day, don't beat yourself up and feel bad and be mad at yourself because you didn't, you know, you weren't grateful for every transition that you did the other day because that's not going to happen. It might be zero times. Um, but it, it's, I think the foundations you mentioned in the beginning of the day is great. And then I like to add at the end and then, um, you know, as many times in the middle as possible. Yep. Love it. Okay, number seven, how can you redesign your evenings to bring more rest to your night? So on the flip side of the morning routines, evening routines, so that you get more, more, more rest. Yep, I'll give a real short one to this. I know we're, we're running out of time here, but simply put, 
to me anyway, it's about unwinding your mind. The, the worst thing I could do to, to reverse engineer this is to read a financial book or to start working on my personal finance stuff or, you know, whatever, because then my mind gets going. I could do this. And what about that? And blah, 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 blah. And then I can't sleep. So it's like no phone, no internet, no computer, 30 minutes at least before bed, ideally longer, uh, setting an alarm early so I don't have to think about it last minute and just unwinding, relaxing, possibly meditating. I do that sometimes and not engaging in anything that's going to make my mind start running. And really, that's it. Yep, I cannot agree more with that last part. I, I, I'll, I'll read, but I'll, it, I'll unwind with something that's not very demanding. It's going to make me laying in bed, staring at the ceiling, thinking, you know, <laughs> just something very, you know, uh, it, it could still be, it doesn't have to be fiction. It could still be nonfiction, but um, maybe more bi biographical, but not, you know, something very, very uh, engaging. And then something else too, more more practical, I guess, I guess that's practical, but um, smaller meals at dinner to not you know, completely stuffing my face until I'm, you know, my stomach hurts and I'm laying in bed, you know, sick, <laughs> feeling like, you know, everyone knows that feeling. Um, and so pretty, it's so no smaller deals at meals at dinner so that I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling bad in bed. Um, so we've got a few more minutes. So uh, we've got three questions left. Uh, if, it's, if it's okay with you, I'd like to skip to the last one and talk about, uh, you know, how can you give back more in 2021? Um, and then if you have more time, maybe we can go back to question number nine about uh, what we would do with more passive income. So uh, how can you give back more in 2021? Yeah, that's a great question. And I've always thought of this kind of thing. Anytime I've ever heard the words give back as a, as a child and growing up, I always thought about money. You know, how, how are you going to give? Where do you donate money? All these things. And, and really, it doesn't have to be about that. And actually, it was Joe Fairless that kind of opened my mind even more to this concept that, you know, you have to have enough of something, kind of an overflow of something to be able to adequately give back, you know, that, that same thing. So if you have a lot of money, you, you have money to give back. If you don't have any money, you can't give money. Uh, for me, it's time. So I was able to free up a bunch of time through the types of investing I do and a change of lifestyle and, and work that I choose to, to work on. And now that I have that abundance of time, I give back my time. I do that weekly. I do that daily uh, to people through mostly through my, my calendar link, um, you know, where I set up 15 minute calls with both you know, investors and just anybody in the real estate space that wants to connect. And, and I give that back. And so to me, that's I will continue that. I've done it all year this year and for the last several years and 2021 same focus yeah it, it, yeah that's a um that's a great point because I mean, you, you gotta think about this this is one reason why we stress uh at least on the on the active side but i know travis does this as well the the concept of having a thought leadership platform um, obviously you know it benefits you know, the person that has a thought leadership platform but at the same time i mean travis is is, is writing these blog posts of, of all this knowledge that he's gained over, you know, the past, at least the past five years since he started investing, um, all the different mistakes that he made, all the lessons that he learned. And then he writes that up in a blog post and then gives the information away for free, right? On, on our blog, we've got, I, I don't even know how many blog posts we have now. I mean, hundreds of blog posts about actively investing, about passively investing, about you know, lifestyle, um, but you name it, anything related to business or real estate. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I try to focus on that, you know, the, the podcast, uh, interviewing people, right? You're helping them in their in their business, getting their, their, their name out there. Um, and then, you know, obviously there's there's, there's financial things that I, I do as well, but, um, you know, as to, to, to keep on the concept of time freedom, um, you know, doing this podcast and helping people have more time. And one thing that Joe talks about, um, I remember, he, I'm not sure if he still has on the website or not, I think he does, but if you read his bio, it talks about like what his um, what his you know his mission is, what his his vision is, and why he does what he does, and he you know does uh, access indications so that people can passively invest, they can achieve financial freedom, they can achieve time freedom, so that they have more time to spend on things, and then from and then you know and, and when they have more time to spend on things, they'll ultimately uh, do more good, and so there'll be more good done in the world as a result of him helping people achieve those goals. I, was, I always thought that was um. That's very interesting and applying that to, you know, what you're doing. So if you're not giving away, you know, tens of thousands of dollars every single, every single year or every single day or whatever, uh, you know, that's, that's okay. Um, 
as long as you're you know, focused on, on the time. And so it's kind of balancing both of those. Yep. Couldn't agree more. So, so yeah, so I'm, I'm going to quickly uh, just at the end here, go through these questions uh, and a list so that people listening can write them down and then we'll, we'll wrap up. So number one was what time waster are you willing to let go of? And number two is if you had one more hour during the day, what would you do with it? Three, what have you been procrastinating on that you would like to complete? Four, what is your favorite thing to do and how can you make more time to do it? Five, how can you redesign your mornings? Six, how can you add 15 minutes of gratitude to each day? Seven, how can you redesign your evenings to bring more rest to your nights? Eight, which is when we skipped, do you set goals and how? Uh, nine, which we skipped, if you had $20,000 in passive income a month, what is one thing you would do? And then the last one, number 10, is how can you give back more in 2021? So Travis, anything else you want to leave us with before we wrap up? No, but I really do encourage everybody listening to write those down and to make note of them and, and really start planning and thinking through. I'm, I'm big into envisioning your future, you know, so the ones that we skip, like the 20000 a month, that exercise is just to get your mind thinking in that direction uh, so that you can set your goals so that you can reverse engineer and get there. Perfect. All right, Travis, well, thanks again for, for, uh, for joining us today. Uh, best of your listeners, as always, thank you for listening. Have a best ever day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.